Sports News on CW57. I am Ryan Ashker, and here are this week's headlines. Madison Memorial made it to the Final Four in Boys State Hockey after a flurry of goals in the first period to go up on Eau Claire Memorial 4-1 after the first period. The Spartans would hold on to win that game 4-3. Madison Memorial would then fall in the semifinal game 6-3 against Wausau West. The Wausau West Warriors will face Superior for the state title. University of Wisconsin Oshkosh's season ended in the second round of the NCAA Division III Women's Basketball Championship after a 91-71 loss to Calvin College at Van Nord Arena on March 7th. This was the eighth straight season a WIAC school has advanced past the opening round. The Titans earned a spot in the second round with an 87-82 first round victory over North Central College on March 6th. UW Oshkosh completed the 2015 campaign with a 23-7 record and the WIAC tournament title. The Titans made the program's second straight and 12th overall NCAA appearance. The Madison Memorial Spartans claimed their fifth straight boys swim team state championship and ninth in 11 years. Their dynasty continued one of the most dominant performances the state has ever seen when the Spartans won four events totaling 350.5 points. That is the second most in meet history. Memorial won the 200-yard medley relay, the 200-yard freestyle relay, and individually, Ben Gebhardt won the 100-yard butterfly, and Justin Temprano won the 100-yard backstroke. The Monona Grove boys are also putting together an impressive streak in swimming as they won their second Division II state swim championship in three years by beating rival McFarland at the UW Natatorium. The Silver Eagles were helped by a freshman, Ben McDade, who won both the 200-yard freestyle and the 500-yard freestyle. As a team, Monona Grove won the 200-yard freestyle relay and the 400-yard freestyle relay. UW River Falls sweeps hockey titles in the WIAC as the men claimed the Commissioner's Cup with a 3-1 victory over UW Stevens Point at KB Willett Arena on March 7th. For the men, this is their first cup in program history. They completed the regular season with a 27-1 record. The NCAA Division III Championship selections will be announced very soon. The River Falls women raised the O'Brien Cup for the second straight year after crushing UW Stevens Point 6-1. The Falcons finished the regular season with a 24-3-1 record. Those are your headlines. We'll be right back with more of the sports news after this. Hello and welcome to the sports news. Today we are joined by Troy Loffenberg and Pat Rice of Wanakee High School. And the reason we brought them in here is Troy just signed as a preferred walk-on to be a part of the Wisconsin Badgers football team next season. Guys, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, Troy, tell us a little bit about uh, the recruitment process, how things went, and maybe some things you're really looking forward to about joining the uh, Badgers next year. Yeah, so I started getting letters in the mail and at school probably in the spring after my junior season and uh, they wanted me to come down to their camp so I went to their camp uh, last summer and then I, I continued to get uh, letters in the mail from them and then Ben Strickland my recruiting coordinator he kept in contact with me over Twitter and texting and it got closer to signing day um, I got a little nervous with the coaching change but I knew coach Rice and coach Chris were pretty good friends and that would help my opportunities with the Badgers, hopefully, and it did, and they gave me the offer, and I accepted it. Fantastic. Now, um, going to such a storied high school as Wanakee when it comes to football and growing up so close to Madison, how are some of those emotions, or how do you feel, you know, kind of playing for the hometown team? That's something a lot of student-athletes grow up dreaming of doing is becoming a Badger. So how does it feel? Yeah, I know it's always been a dream for me and, you know, like many other the guys on the team, <clears throat> it's, it's a dream come true, you know, always being a fan, you know, growing up, going to the games, do, do basketball, football, you know, I've always been a Badger fan and it's, it's just a dream come true to be a part of, you know, a team that I've always cheered on. I could imagine. Uh, now, Coach Rice, what are some of the things that's made Troy kind of, a, um, you know, a good player for you and, and some of those talents he's going to be taking over to uh, the Badgers next season? Well, first of all, his, his work ethic was tremendous throughout his career. He, uh, he had started, he was up with us as a sophomore uh, and just learned from some great leaders that year and has kind of taken it on. His leadership was, was unbelievable. His work ethic, his weight room, you know, his measurables are, are you know, off the charts. They speak for themselves with his speed and his explosiveness. 
but again, his, his leadership is, was huge. Now, at the UW, I think, you know, the thing that we tried to sell uh, all these schools on was his vers versatility. I mean, not only can he, you know, play running back, but he's a great receiver. He can play, you know, in the secondary, he's a, a safety. Defensively, could possibly move up and play an outside linebacker, alley type position. And then, uh, you know, he's an all-conference punter and kicker. So a guy like him makes you look like a pretty good coach. And he, his versatility, I think, will really, uh, um, you know, be, be a, a good thing up at the UW. He truly is an athlete, and I think he'll be able to do a lot of things and where they need him. Well, Coach Rice, Troy, thank you so much for coming out to the sports news here today. And, Troy, we want to all wish you uh, the best of luck next season with the Badgers. That is one key. Troy Laufenberg and Pat Rice will be right back on the sports news after this. And welcome back to the sports news. Right now I'm joined by Tim Chase and Tim Latterin, the head coaches at Beaverdam High School in boys and girls basketball. Guys, thanks for joining us here today. Morning. Yeah, morning. So both of you are head coaches at Beaverdam. Tell us what's that like that, you know, Area, I'm very familiar with it, but uh, you know, that's a little bit north of our viewing area. Tell us what's going on up in Beaverdam and how you guys are doing. Uh, I think Beaverdam is just a great community. We have a lot of community support. Um, it's been a great place to really have our own families come into, but I just love the support there. So we've had a really successful run in basketball on the girls' side the last few years. Yeah, the boys' side, we've, you know, we've got great kids, great program, and um, a lot of people that really support us. We've had uh, great community support, great fan support, great student sections, and uh, just a, a community that really binds together. And one of the things you guys are dealing with now is the possibility of conference realignment and the breaking up of the Little Ten. Uh, what do you guys foresee, or where might Beaverdam possibly end up once those new conferences kind of shake out? Well, I think uh, we're excited about it. I think, I think there's a good chance that we end up in the Badger Conference, which I think would be a great conference for us. I think it's a lot of communities that sort of uh, are very similar to what Beaverdam is. There's a lot of communities that really uh, support their athletic programs, and I think that's exciting for us. I think there's a lot of history in the Little Ten, but at the same time, we got to look at changing over time. Uh, Badger makes sense in a lot of cases just from traveling from the size of the, the schools and the, the distances and things like that. So the Badger would probably be a good fit for Beaverdam. Sounds good. Uh, now, both of you had very successful seasons this year with boys and girls basketball up at Beaverdam. Uh, what are some of the things that have contributed to that? What uh, can you kind of lay that success on? Uh, from the girls' side, really, our youth program has really taken off the last few years. Uh, we were able to get our sixth consecutive conference championship this year. Uh, but a lot of that says to go with our, our younger programs along with the coaches we have working at those programs to really build a solid program. Yeah, our, our youth programs have been great. Um, we've our development of our players and our coaches on the youth levels have done such a good job of, of uh, helping us develop our players. And, and uh, you know, you don't really get to the place where we're at right now without having our youth programs and the help we have from our parents and the support of our community. Now, uh, Beaver Dam, your mascot, the Golden Beavers. Uh, what's the story behind that? How did that kind of come about? Well, it was uh, a long time ago. We had a, Beaver Dam used to have a boxing uh, program and uh, Beaverdam's boxing program was always really good, and so it ended up being that you know because of the Golden Gloves, it, the nickname became Golden Beavers, and it just sort of stuck with us. And our the mascot still has boxing gloves on. Huh? Understandable. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming. That is Tim Chase and Tim Latterin from the Beaverdam Golden Beavers here on the Sports News. We're going to be right back with more after this. And welcome back to the Sports News. Today I am joined by Mike Lipp, Athletic Director at Madison West High School. Mike, thanks for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here. Enjoy it. Uh, so with Athletic uh, Director, what's the benefit or some of the advantages of having school sports or being able to have a multitude of sports for student athletes to play and partake in? Well, I'm a longtime educator and I firmly believe the, the most important thing we teach in schools is um, citizenship. And I think that uh, there's lots to be gained, much to be gained from playing on sports, on team sports. Um, it's more than winning and losing. Um, you know, sacrifice of individuals and their families, uh, doing things for a greater good, a team, team good, a concept like that, uh, will carry kids through life. Um, 
into life. Also, um, many of our sports are lifelong sports. Think about tennis, swimming, golf. And uh, the sooner kids get involved with those kind of activities, the, the, the better. You know? And Madison West has a wide variety of different sports that their students can play and partake in and, you know, obviously advance in. What are some of the differences between, you know, the sanctioned actual school sports and maybe club sports that uh, students get involved with? Sure, that's a good question. Um, we're big enough that we participate in every one of the 23 sports that the state organization sponsors. We also have about eight or ten other sports uh, through our club programs. Um, so big difference between, say, high school programs and club activities would be we have accountability with grades and attendance. Without attending on a regular basis and without passing your classes, you're not going to play. That doesn't exist in the club venues. Um, and I think that's another one of these good life lessons. So we say we're the triple A, uh, you know, you want athletics, you have to have attendance and um, academics. So, yeah, keeping the student athletes, yeah. you know, accountable. So you're not only making good athletes, but, you know, good people, hopefully, after they leave you guys. Right, good people, citizens again, citizenship. Uh, kind of touching on that, can you talk a little bit about, you know, the athletic code, something you will put in place uh, for all your student athletes and for a lot of students as well. Is that something the students really follow? How strict are you with it? And what are some of the varieties with that? Uh, athletic codes of conduct e exist at every school in Wisconsin. We were mandated by the state to have one. And um, it's very important that uh, kids are healthy. Most of the rules we have in place are for one of two reasons, to ensure that the kids are healthy and to ensure fair play. Um, so, you know, uh, avoiding um, alcoholic beverages at the age that our kids are, avoiding uh, other uh, illicit drugs, um, unprescribed anabolic steroids or uh, re recreational use of uh, regular pharmaceuticals uh, are all detrimental to, uh, to your health. It, it's clear. Uh, it's, it's bad for kids at that age to be doing those kind of things. And um, that's part of why the Carter Code of Conduct's in place. And yeah, again, uh, you know, with the other aspects, with uh, grades and uh, attendance. It's in there. If you skip a class, you're going to have to sit. I don't know why you want to train all week and then have to sit because you decided to skip a third-hour study hall. It makes no sense to me. And after a while, the kids who have those kind of, uh, you know, tendencies, uh, they either fade away from athletics or they uh, correct their evil ways. Uh, well, Mike, thank you very much for joining us here today. It is Mike Lipp, the athletic director at Madison West High School, doing a great job. I want to thank you for coming on the sports news today. Well, thanks for having me again. Appreciate it. We'll be right back with more of the sports news after this. Welcome back to the sports news. Right now, I'm joined by Bob Jores, athletic director at Middleton High School. Bob, thanks for joining us here today. No problem. Glad to be here. And we were talking a little bit off camera. You've been in Middleton a long, long time with a little break in there. Uh, what are some of the keys you've had to maintaining, you know, not only athletic but academic success at Middleton? Well, we've had a rich tradition of all family people working in the business. And what I mean by that is our boosters, our administration, um, all of our different coaches, all putting in extra time and making our program very successful over the years. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of interaction over there and some great coaches and uh, staff as well. Um, what are some of the reasons that, you know, we always want more students to participate? What are some of the advantages for student athletes to be involved in uh, athletics? Sure. The more kids that you get involved, they have a greater commitment, a, a greater interest in the school. So we've pushed that very hard, and, and I think everybody knows that. Get somebody interested in the school, they're going to want to go out for athletics, they're going to want to do better in their grades. And it's worked really well for us. Our, our average, average grade point for kids that have been out for athletics was 3.4, and then the, um, those were, that were not in athletics was a 2.5. So we don't have a whole lot that aren't in athletics. In fact, we have about 1,200 kids that are out for athletics, and it seems to be working rather nice for us. GPA is really impressive for, for athletes. Way to go. Uh, what are you most proud of with everything kind of Milton achieves, you know, not only this year academically, but, you know, in the last several years, Mid Middleton's had some really powerhouse teams. Uh, what are you most proud of with your position? Uh, yes, we have, I think last year we had 14 teams that finished in the top 15 at state. That's pretty impressive. Um, we also had 15 conference champions last year. 
Uh, we already have eight this year and we're going into our spring season. But I think what I'm most uh, um, proud about is moving to the next level. Uh, we have a new strength and conditioning program that we're working on, as well as the participation, get those kids involved and, as I said before, our grade points. As he touched on some of the things to look forward to for Middleton Athletics. With that, how do you improve on that? You mentioned the new you know, strength and conditioning program, some other things going on. What, uh, what are some of the goals you have or how do you improve? Yeah, I think it's do more of the same. If, you're, if it's not broken, then keep doing that. Um, the strength and conditioning is great. Uh, our, our fathers and mothers and coaches from way in the past had a different uh, vision of what strength and conditioning was about. You would do bench presses, you would do squats. Now it's a lot of movement and we're keeping up with the times basically. Um, also educating our coaches. Our coaches are great and they've stayed with our program for many years. Uh, but it's you're never too old to keep learning. So we try to go to clinics, bring people in, see what the latest things are that are happening. Bob George, athletic director over at Middleton High School. We'll be right back with more of the sports news after this. Welcome back to the sports news. Right now I'm joined by Mark and Jackson Hemauer of DeForest High School, the wrestling team. Guys, thanks for being out here today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, so Mark, you're the coach. Jackson, you're obviously an athlete. Uh, tell us a little bit about this dynamic first. Mark, what it's like coaching your son? Uh, it's, gotten, uh, it's gotten better as he's gotten older. I think, uh, you know, younger, when he's younger, it's harder to separate the, the father-son, but uh, as he's kind of gotten his own goals and um, set his own path. He, we try to keep it. And I've got some great assistants, and I kind of let them handle some of that stuff with him, so we can keep that uh, keep that balance good. Mm -hmm. Jackson, same question for you. What it's like to have uh, your dad coach you every day? So you're dealing with him at home, and then at practice too. Yeah, um, it's definitely a lot different than you know, just having your dad be your dad and your coach being your coach. Um, it used to be kind of hard going back from bringing practice home, kind of, so we've worked on kind of keeping practice at practice and home life at home life, so it's fun though. Trying to find the right dynamic. Yeah. Uh, Jackson, I see you just placed second at uh, the state wrestling tournament in individuals at uh, 152, and your teammate Hunter Topla also placed fourth for DeForest at a heavyweight. That's really exciting. Tell us a little bit about uh, you know that journey, maybe some of the emotion that went along with it. And, uh, you know, is that, that what you kind of look forward to moving forward in that? Yeah, it was definitely, um, it was an incredible experience, um, especially being able to do it with uh, two of my teammates being there also. So, you know, always going to the state tournament when I was younger, um, watching all of our older high school wrestlers, and then that finally being me and being able to actually, you know, make it to the podium, that was just awesome, so... Along with that, if uh, some of our fans have never been to the state wrestling tournament, it's a spectacle. They do a really good job making a big deal with the, you know, the lights announcement, things like that. Did that get you nervous at all? Did it amp you up? What were kind of some of the emotions you had going into the match? Yeah, definitely. It was, I mean, a little nerve wracking, you know, big crowd, lights everywhere, you know. But, uh, um, you know, it was always it was super exciting, just a whole bunch of nerves flying around, but, you know, Right once the match starts, just another match, so just got to think about it like that. Mark, what were some of your expectations going in as a coach and as a father to that state tournament? You know, what were you expecting out of your athletes? Uh, this year I felt really good um, coming into the tournament. I just felt we were going to walk away with some medals. Uh, the way they do the state tournament, um, you know, you could get paired up with some really good kids right away. They don't seed it, so depending on um, the order that's drawn by the WIA, uh, those kids could, you know, you can have two or three really good kids right in your little quadrant or in the top half of the bracket. And uh, But I just felt this year that things were really balanced in all of our uh, weight classes with our kids. I felt good. So um, I guess if I was feeling good, the kids obviously were too because they perform well. So Mark Hemauer and Jackson Hemauer of DeForest High School Wrestling. We'll be right back with more of the sports news after this.
Welcome back to the Sports News. My next guest is Mel Dow, Athletic Director at Stoughton High School. Mel, thanks for joining us here today. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate being here. Uh, when we were talking previously, you mentioned that your participation rate at Stoughton has raised 48% in the last four years. That is incredible. Uh, what are some of the things you've done to kind of achieve that? Well, in this day and age, you hear so much about kids uh, trying to specialize in sports. And in Stoughton, uh, we preach the multi-sport athletes. We truly believe that success breeds success. And uh, when kids start being having success in one area, we get them to transfer that over to some other sports. And lately, there seemed to be a big surge in not only playoff appearances, but state appearances and Vikings teams going very deep into uh, you know, state playoffs. Is that something you expected when you took the position or what has contributed to Stoughton's success? Yeah, well, what we're trying to do is, is we continue to build confidence in our athletes. Um, and as I said before, success be, builds success. And uh, we want to make sure that we have high established goals and high expectations and then providing our programs with the tools that they need to become successful. Your basketball and wrestling teams had great seasons achieving conference titles and advancing into the playoffs. Uh, what are some of the things that contributed with those teams specifically for having such great seasons? Well, Ryan, on a personal note, it was always a professional career of my, or goal of mine to uh, win conference titles in both of those sports. Um, in in uh, this day and age, again, you want to see all your programs successful, and it's great to see our coaches that uh, they're great friends, they're coworkers, and uh, they feed off of each other's success and help each other with their accomplishments. And uh, it's a little bit about the magic that we're building down in Stoughton is, is we're supporting each other. Uh, we have uh, multi-sport meetings, uh, a lot of coaching in services and uh, that's helping us build success across all of our programs. And you mentioned the multi-sport aspect, you know, not being the biggest school, that's going to play a huge part in your athletics. What are just some of the things you've done with your coaches, the rest of your staff, maybe the parents in the area and the athletes to encourage these kids to be multi-sport athletes or make that work so they can be successes on the field but also off the field academically? Our district truly believes in professional development, and that's one thing that we do invest in our coaches. Uh, we provide them opportunities to go to training, take coursework, and so forth. But we also have regularly attended all coaches meetings, and not talking just head coaches, but we're talking all the way through our volunteer coaches, where we have 80 plus coaches in attendance. Um, we actually have one coming up here next week where uh, we bring in guest speakers and we talk about everything from character to X's and O's to help our coaches move our programs forward. And I'm glad you brought up the character education part. With your athletics, you know, character and academic are very high for student athletes. They're expected to achieve in the classroom as well as on the field and just be overall good people, which you want your athletes to be. Um, how is that something that you have enforced and grown and had thrive in the school? Well, we truly believe that winning is a byproduct at Stoughton. If you're doing all the little things right, the wins will take care of themselves. We know that every time you go into an athletic competition, both teams are trying to win, and therefore somebody is going to lose the game. But if we continue to build our kids in character, uh, work on their academics, and uh, work on those social aspects, we know that we're putting out the best possible student athlete. Notice the word student first. And uh, we feel that that's something that we're moving towards in Stoughton. And uh, like I said, the wins will take care of themselves, and, and recently, uh, that's coming a long way as well. Thank you, Mel. That is Mel Dow, Athletic Director at Stoughton High School. want to thank you for tuning in to the Sports News. I'm Ryan Ashker, and we'll see you next week.